Hi and welcome back to this course on memories in VLSI. In this video, we will try to understand flash memory, which is the last type of ROM in our discussion. Flash memory was invented by Fujio Masuoka at Toshiba in 1984. He coined the term because the blocks of memory were erased all at once in a flash. The basic memory cell is exactly the same as that of EEPROM. Masuoka developed NAND architecture that cut the area per bit by 30% later in the future. There are two major architectures, NAND architecture and NOR architecture, NAND flash memory and NOR flash memory. Flash memory has become extremely popular because of its low cost per bit and non-volatile storage. So it is highly used in flash memory cards, the memory cards which we call, and also in firmwares or internal storage devices of smartphones. So most flash memories are NAND based. These are divided into blocks which are in turn made out of pages. For example, we can take a conventional NAND flash memory which might be made of 8 kilobytes of flash or 64 kilobits of uh, flash block each of which will contain 16 512 byte pages as you can see over here the 8 kilobyte flash block which can be you know multiplied you can add more blocks over here each page is basically 512 byte page 512 byte is nothing but 4096 uh, bits in total with 0 to bit 4095 which is uh, you can multiply 512 times 8 you will get 4096 so you will have 16 of 4000 uh, you know for 16 of 512 bytes which will make it into an 8 kilobyte which is 8 times 1024 bytes the charge on the floating gate indicates the threshold of the transistor and indicates the state of the cell exactly as compared to the EE prom. A negative threshold represents a logic 1 and the positive threshold represents logic 0. As we knew that programming will cause the threshold voltage of the transistor to increase. If we are increasing the threshold voltage, that means it represents logic 0. If programming is not done through Fuller Nordheim tunneling, then the transistor will have a negative threshold voltage which makes it always on. And this is as same as that of a depletion type MOSFET. Even though the flash memory was invented in 1984, by 1988, the long-term reliability had been proven and the volume production of memory of 256 kilobyte was started. Now let's understand how this memory has been written and uh, let's also understand and give some description about this structure over here. In NAND flash memory, the floating gate transistors are connected in series to form something called as strings. Each string consists of 16 cells. String select, SSL transistor and the ground select transistor has been used. And you see that here it is 16 cells because it is a 8 kilobyte flash but it not, need not be just 16 cells. It could be multiple of them, right? As you can see in this figure uh, is what we are saying that this entire thing is a column is called as a string where these are the floating gate transistors you see these two transistors which has which are ground select and string select transistors are actually normal transistors but only these are floating gate transistors which have two polys as you can see here has been shown here flash memory is written one page at a time erased one block at a time which means if you want to write into this memory, how will you write it? You will write one word at a time, right? You can, we can write one word. That means it's one page at a time. So it's written at one page at a time and erased one block at a time. This entire block will be erased if it is erased. There will be multiple blocks. It's not like it will be, you know, the entire memory will be de uh, deleted all at once. But each block will be erased at once. For erasing, the blocks are erased by setting all the control gates to ground or logic zero and raising the substrate to 20 volts. So as you can see here, the control gates will be provided zero voltage, which is ground, and the substrate will be given 20 volts. The difference is huge. 
So what happens is basically the high voltage across the gate oxide induces fuller nordheim tunneling again causing the electrons to flow from the floating gate over here to the substrate which is like pulling uh, electrons again back. At this period of time word lines of other blocks are set to 20 volts so that it inhibits erasing of those uh, blocks as well so this is for other uh, see if we are erasing for one block we have to make uh, other word lines these ones which are control gates so we have to make these ones 20 volts so that you know there is no potential difference across it so that uh, it will not get erased at the end of erasing all the floating gate transistors will have negative threshold voltage indicating logic one so if you want to program it again so that you can program some somewhat like this giving 20 volts to your um, gate and zero volts to the substrate so that you know the electrons will tunnel through uh, the gate again which will increase its threshold voltage tunneling is a slow process so the block erasing will take order of a millisecond an on-chip charge pump is used to generate high voltages because 20 volts and all is huge uh, voltage compared to uh, today's integrated circuits where it operates at few uh, volts some of the reliability metrics are uh, retention time, which we have uh, seen. Retention time is time for which the memory uh, will hold its bit. So the memory cell, right? That's uh, what it is. So usually thousands of millions of years, the memory cell can hold it because essentially the electrons are sitting on the floating gate. But what can happen is it can be affected due to the oxide also. So because of that, we can say maximum the retention time is 10 years. And second one is endurance the number of times the memory can be erased and reprogrammed this will be usually hundreds of thousands of uh, cycles we can erase and reprogram again well i have not discussed all the factors such as uh, multi-level flashes or not nor flash memory all those things multi-level flashes are nothing but you know you can have uh, multiple bits stored in uh, a single memory cell by you know programming it into particular voltage so i hope you got some idea about flash memory and uh, some of its use cases as well as how it is uh, programmed as well thanks a lot for watching i'll see you in the next video and bye bye